100,000 subscribers. I've brought some former Golden Knights to help Christy, who has to jump, buck up Skippy in the hangar. Hello and welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. And I am terrified. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. I don't want to talk about this. Well, we are going to have to talk about it because otherwise our guests are here for no reason. Who are our guests? Our guests are, we've got Jeff and Jared from the Flights for Freedom parachute team, former Golden Knights to help you find some courage. Find some courage. I'll tell you what will help me find some courage. <laughs> what? Tell me. Not, tell us all. Not having to jump. <laughs> Oh, it's not going to be that bad. But in addition to that, we're going to talk about Flights for Freedom and what they're doing. So let's let's uh, while she's um, recovering here, Jeff, <laughs> tell us about yourself, your background. Well, uh, former Army guy and spent some time on the Army parachute team, the Golden Knights, and uh, and that's how I fell in love with aviation in general because I didn't realize how jumping out of airplanes would segue into the love of flying them. More on that later. All right, Jared, your background. Um. Kind of like Jeff, uh, I did my first jump when I was 21 and knew that was it, and been doing it ever since. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, because that doesn't really matter, but. Uh, <laughs> um, then once I got enough jumps, tried out for the Army team, made it, and just had a ball, had a blast, and we didn't really want to stop years later, so we just kept jumping and um, decided to throw a team together and, and support veterans and first responders. Okay, for the Golden Knights uh, in the Army, you guys are you know regular U.S. Army, um, do you guys have something else you're doing in addition to the Golden Knights? Or do you, you get kind of assigned to the Golden Knights, and when you're done with the Golden Knights, do you have to go back to the foxholes? What's the deal? Well, we all had you know, our own job in the military at the time, but uh, this was a special assignment, and uh, it wasn't given to us. There is an assessment selection program that's quite intense. Mm -hmm. Jared, being one of the cadre at some point, could probably speak a little bit more about that, but... My stint was very short on that, um, and like he said, just a little background, you know, I made one jump when I was 20, and it scared me so much, I, I thought I'd never no, do it again. Don't, don't uh, listen. <laughs> yeah, I told you. No. Self-imposed stress, by the way, and then... Self-imposed stress. And then the 15,000 jumps later, I'm like, well, obviously I started to like it. After 15,000, I just want to point that out. Okay, so you heard that on taking off, Christy wants to do 15,000. No, I just, no. I'm saying you have to do 15,000 to right. be okay with that. So she's saying she has to do 15,000. Jeff, can I ask you a very real and direct question? Sure. Did you pee the first time that you jumped? I did not. Did you throw up? I did not, but uh, they have this thing that's called sensory overload. It's where it's kind of you gray out and you don't remember all the details of what you're supposed to do. And I th think that typically happens to everyone. It it's happens just, every time I think about it, actually. So You gray well, out? <laughs> yeah. Jumping is not for everybody, and I, and I realize that. But uh, it's, you know, they say one out of every six adult will want, will want to make a parachute jump in their life. But, you know, I don't try to press on everyone. And Dan is three of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jared, back to the question about, um, I mean, so like when the jumping's over, do you guys just go back to the, to the, how does that all work? As far as the Golden Knights go? Yeah. Um, it's a three-year assignment to okay. start with. Um, once you try out and you make the team, you get assigned to one of the demonstration teams. From there, um, I was a parachute rigger by you know, MOS, mm -hmm. so I could have stayed on the team for another 10 years and retired. Um, some of the guys, some of the Special Forces guys or the Rangers during the war had to go for a year and then come back to the team. So it really depends on your on your MOS and the needs of the Army at the time. For those of our audience that don't know, what exactly do the Golden Knights do? Well, they're kind of ambassadors. They're basically a uh, recruiting tool that the military uses. Uh, kind of like the Blue Angels or it, the Thunderbirds. Yeah. And in fact, it's the uh, one of the DOD sanctions uh, you know, military teams. You know, demonstration teams like the others, like you mentioned. But so the Army, that is their official DOD sanctioned, um, you know, demonstration team. Okay, very cool. So you guys just go around, you perform for air shows, air shows, rodeos, yeah. football games. Um, I mean, we've done a lot of shows with the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds, and more of your bigger air shows. Excellent. All right, so you guys retired from the Army or left the Army and then. 
Uh, Jeff, take us up to date now with how uh, you guys decided on doing Flights of Freedom and Flights for Freedom and what, you know. Well, you know, Scott Evan has, has uh, always been a love of mine, and then sh just the aspect of uh, how you how you can control your body to get out of the airplane. And once I became a pilot, then I realized how the two corresponded so closely. So with that being said, I took some time off from jumping while I was pursuing my aviation career. And then I got back into it for a while and then did some education stuff with it. And like him, I'm a parachute rigger. And and basically, I wouldn't, I don't like to use the word skydivers because I don't really see us as skydivers per se. I, I think we have a special art form on how we, we showcase our skills by being able to land in tight areas on no wind days. So it's basically unpowered flight. And uh, we were looking for an outlet to be able to do that. And we didn't want to be drop zone bums, hanging out at the drop zone all day, waiting for a jump. It's just, you know, we love jumping in people's backyards or, or sporting yeah. events, you name it, you know. If, uh, if we can put a parachute in it, we'd love to be a part of it. I have an idea. We should totally show up on Brian's, in Brian's backyard for his birthday or something. There you go. He's about. He's going to turn fifty here, like any moment. And well, Chrissy, I think you need to get a few more jumps in before you try to do something. Like oh my that. gosh, I wasn't Jeff talking about me. We should. Oh, no. <laughs> so. I was talking about them. Like we could get them to do it, and you. Um. So, How Jared, <laughs> are you a pilot as well? I am not. I'm okay, not. but but you do. Uh, you do unpowered flights all the time. I like how. The, I, I've how never used that term that. until uh, Jeff brought it up today. But yes, <laughs> yes. Um, how did you get involved uh, with Jeff on Flights for Freedom? So that's a, kind of a mixed bag. There's only so many professional demonstrators out there that do what we do. Um, so we've jumped for other teams here and there just for more for fun than anything. Um, I had a, had a team um, a few years back, and we've kind of dissolved that. Everybody went kind of different directions, but we didn't want to stop jumping. And me and Jeff were the, the two guys that were doing the chopping. Um, so we said, well, let's keep it going and we'll just keep it, keep it local as we can and, and just have some fun. And, and while we're at it, we're gonna help the veterans and, and um, first responders, the retired law enforcement. So we started doing that and it just opened a lot of doors. You know, we'd, you do one jump and you hit the ground, you start talking to people and- You said hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at some point okay. you're gonna hit the ground. Very gently, very gently hit the ground. Okay. But, but you run into to people that are veterans, say, that may not, might not qualify for certain things through the VA. So we said so it's a mobility issue. Uh, we've got local people that we set them up with, get a chair, get whatever devices they might need. Um, so just by getting out in the crowd and talking, it just puts us in front of the guys that we need to, to really push. All right, so if you're helping veterans and first responders, how are you helping them? Well, awareness more than anything. Uh, this is kind of a new brand for us, and, uh, and it's kind of the infancy as far as our mission statement is concerned. But one thing we have social media, and, and hopefully if, if they have, you know, venues or events that, like my daughter, for instance, she, she's, she has a doctorate in nursing, and she's always talking about, you know, educating people on different principles and practices, and she's very passionate about it. So we just like getting plugged into local events and stuff like that, you know. But like I said, we're kind of new in the infancy as far as that mission part of it. But we kind of open the door for anyone that wants us around. But right. we are passionate about, you know, first responders, medical, and, uh, you know, military vets. And we do, uh, we do have a show every year in Missouri, um, Song for Soldiers. And they have, uh, last time, probably 15 or so different nonprofits that were set up with booths. Yeah. We talked to everybody see how we can help them. So if we can do a jump into an event for them, it's great for them, it brings more people in. Um, at the same time, we meet a lot of people that we can refer to them, and that's kind of how we do it. We're, we're not in the, the kind of business, um, so to speak, where we can offer mental health services. We're just not doctors, you know, so with our certain skills, we just try to include ourselves to get more people involved. You're using your powers for good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So we're, like he mentioned one day, we're kind of the side act actually. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not really about putting the spotlight on us. It's just like, if you have something going on and you have a, a worthy cause, say, hey, we got parachutes coming in. 
And if we land and we can draw attention to that and but kind of push the, the attention on actually to what the real event's about, like he talked about Songs for Soldiers, that was great. And the, the Rescue Dogs was really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, uh, so you're just doing all sorts of different events. You're, oh, you're yeah. not really keeping yourself necessarily. No. You're just, okay. So in April, there's an event uh, that we've been kind of broadcast to do. It's uh, it's for Special Olympics for the for a local high school here in, uh, in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So anything like that, I mean, if we can get just get our name out, not necessarily our name, but if, if you can use our skills, you know, to be able to fly uh, parachutes and flags and smoke, we do anthem jumps, like something to kick off patriotic. Um, you know, we kind of pride ourselves landing on the last note of the national anthem, you know. We lower the flag, you start the anthem, and we're on the target, you know, a minute and 23 seconds later, so. That's incredible. I, I think that the messaging here is really, really great, and the, the mission that you guys are doing actually is really, really cool. Now, I want to talk about something that's relevant to my interests. Okay. Um, do you guys do tandem jumps for scared YouTubers that are being forced against their will to? Well, absolutely. Now, I would never want to force you, but... Uh, uh, oh, but it's not you. It's not you. <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to have to sign the waiver. <laughs> yeah. Dan is going to sign it for me. He's, it's just going to be like I Christy. don't think they'll take that. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. I, look, I'm at this point. I'm I'm obligated. I, I'm here for it. Um, yeah. I'm black blanking out. Um, You're I, graying I'm, out. I'm graying there out. There you okay. go. Sensory overload happening right now. Right. No. Seriously. Every time I start to think about it, I'm like. Uh, 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 but. All right. Well, let's go there for a minute before we wrap up uh, flights for freedom. Um, what can she do to be less anxious on her first job? Thank you. Less anxious. Uh, <laughs> Well, we go. I mean, I'm realistic. She's not going to lose all anxiety. I mean, no. Well, first of all, uh, you don't get the sensation of falling. So we, it's not like you're, you, you've drug. got the, the you know, you're getting on the roller coaster and you get that weightlessness feeling in your stomach. I mean, our hands and arms are just like flight controls of an airplane. So as soon as we step out of the out of the, of the door of the aircraft, it's just like you're flying an airplane. These are your ailerons, and and your, and your back, your feet are like rudders. I can and become we have, one with the airplane. We have a tremendous amount of control. Oh my gosh! Okay, hold you are on. You're on the air at that point. Tremendous amount of control. I can be an airplane. You can yes. be. The, the it's called the art of human body flight. That's really what it is. I'm listening. We're to not talking. jumping. We're body flying. The art of human. Okay, continue. Okay. And so with that being said, once we accelerate to terminal, which takes uh, terminal velocity. I was uh, going to say you It's velocity. Terminal. Okay. And that's roughly about 120 miles per hour for most average people. And uh, for the Nuff Warrior. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. But it's all relevant. So since you don't feel like you've got the fallen sensation, you're using that air across your body as your relative wind. It's the same, same concept, the same terminology as flying airplanes. And then once I figured that out, I'm like, oh, I see what's happening now. But and then that's how I really fell in love with both of them. Actually. Okay. I'm actually, I'm listening. I'm, I'm this coming. This is working. No, it is actually. Yeah. I'm coming out of the gray box that I've been in for the last <laughs> yeah. however long. Yeah, well, you know, like you, we're, you know, we're professional pilots and, and it's not inherently something we would want to do is to jump out of an airplane. Perfectly good one. No. Yeah. And so <laughs> and I think I had about 600 jumps before I took my first flight lessons and they wanted me to go out and stall the plane. I'm like, why would I do this? Right. Because that's something we just don't do intentionally with parachutes to stall them because they can stall because we always want to have lift over it for, you know, for, you know, for flight, you know, mm -hmm. for rate, you know, to rest your rate of descent. You know, you have a, you fly a box pattern, a downwind base and final, just like airplanes and, and you flare like it, you flare it just like mm -hmm. you do as you're coming really? in because you're arresting your rate of descent. And ideally, you know, your feet are like your landing gear and, and then the softer they touch, the better you can evaluate yourself on your landing. You'll butter that landing. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm actually like, this is working. I swear. Like mm -hmm. I'm actually, this is good. See? Okay. See, when I jumped and I've told you this before, what amazed- I don't listen to you though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what amazed me in jumping is once the, once we had deployed the parachute is how much control we had. I was like, wow. I mean, you really are flying. Um, and because I always thought you just drop, but you don't. You you can control it. But it's it. more meaningful coming from somebody who was actually scared to jump and then was like, okay, this isn't so bad, versus Mr. No Fear. You just don't have that gene in you. I, like, I am terrified. I'm a very conscientious, like, 
cautious person. So to this talk, is working. Okay, this that's is great. working. I'm, yeah, thank you, you and Carrie you. don't do anything for me. Oh, but, Carrie too, huh? Yeah, Carrie too. But I would jump with Jeff because it seems like he knows what he's doing when it comes to scared people. Okay. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. So now let's turn that back away. Flights for Freedom, where are you guys wanting to go? Where do you want this organization and thing to be? Well, hopefully, preferably, you know, this is a hobby for us. This is this is not a, a breadwinner, but, but it is our passion. So if anybody wants to hit us up, you know, uh, social media is obviously our primary means now with uh, Flights for Freedom. We have a Facebook user group. We're also on Instagram. Not much content at this point because we're relatively new, but we will have some content in the near future because we have some shows coming up and we'll be able to share some of that. So if anybody wants us, it doesn't matter. Weddings, you know, uh, fam, fam, you know, family you reunions. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, and veterans, you know, we, we're very passionate about veterans because we are veterans and, uh, and their needs. Uh, and it just gives us an outlet. That's it. So if we could do, you know, a show a month and that keeps our, our feet wet and, and, you know, and we can bring a, a roar to the crowd for whatever their event may be, um, we would love to be a part of it. Nice. We do have a, a few guys that are working on getting their pro ratings um, so we can expand a little bit and do more shows. So... Happen. And if I can just put one more plug in, aviation also is something I'm very passionate about. And so with that being said, um, you know, we can take a freshly commercial pilot, you know, that's wet behind the ears, and we can train them up and give them an opportunity to build some time in a high-performance airplane. And I've had an opportunity this last year to work with, like, three pilots to be able to do that. And it's very, very rewarding to me to see, you know, their proficiency gained that quickly, you know. Uh, flying in the short fields and and then being able to wave at them as I jump out of the airplane as I sign them off. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you're ready for your solo. Wow, Goodbye. wow. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. yeah. That's very fun. That's awesome. Wow. Uh, when I jump with you guys, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want smoke. Is that possible? Can we make it like a big thing? Like, can I have smoke coming off of me? Uh, can, I, can it be like, whoa, look at Christy go. So just I, like, I, I do the coordinating. We're not going to get Jeff in trouble, you know, with okay, FAA. But now, I could technically, if he's jumping with you, I can grab your arm and have smoke going on me. So okay. you can't have it on a tandem. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would hold your hand while I'm well, and you really, from the sky. You really don't want the guy that's tandem with you um, blowing smoke on. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Okay, see, I didn't know what the rules are, but but can we make it like a spectacle? Can we have like just Oh, like, it'll be a spectacle. Oh my I gosh. Have no doubt about that. I just want to fall like out of the North Texas skies in style, Dan. Oh, it's happening. Oh, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. And then you're gonna request it'll be I'm predicting that the second jump will be on request by Christy. Would you put money on that, Dan? No, but here. <laughs> All right, Jeff, thank you guys so thank much you for coming. Thank you so much. Um, for we, we'll us. make sure that we have, uh, when Thanks. you talked about it, we'll have this, the link on the screen as well as in the description below. Thank you. All right, thank you guys for watching, and it won't be long until um, Christy is a, a jump uh, aficionado. So oh, aficionado. We're heading okay. that way. And thank you to our sponsors like Z-Vision, the brightest taxi and landing lights out there. Clemens Insurance, Jerry has saved me a lot of money at clemensinsurance.net, Colton Mortgage, coltontakingoff.com, Flying Eyes, these are the best glasses for under headsets and helmets. Can confirm. FlyingEyesOptics.com, use our discount code taking off all caps, one word for 10% off, 67 designs, the best camera mounts and cell phone tablet mounts for your plane, even your car, or a boat even, at 67D.com. Marshall Protective Services. Marshall Protective Services, Services MPSProtects.com. Personal protection elevated. Thank so. you. That's the one I was trying to remember earlier. All right. All right, you guys. Well, if you want to see me jump out of an airplane reluctantly, please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> that helps support our channel. We thank everybody for watching. Likes, <laughs> share, subscribe. We'll see you all next time. In the hangar or on the ground. Oh my gosh, man. No.